Hello lovely people. I welcome you once again to Bright and Clarice channel. Thank you for clicking. This is episode 9 on a 5 bedroom house that we are putting up for Mr. James. This project is located at Tama Community 5 and we are doing a slight modification to the 5 bedroom house. So let's dive into the video and see what we have installed. So I just want to always show you the 3D representation of the house because it is always important. Some people have no idea of the three dimension. There's even a four dimension. We have 3D and a 4D. The 4D comes in a video form where you can even walk into the room, open the doors and see how the room arrangements are like, you understand? So ask your architects, to give you two drawings. There's architectural drawing and structural drawing. The mason will need a structural drawing in order to build your house for you. And then we need a 3D, which will represent the house upon completion. Are you with me? It is always important to do so. All right. In your view is build and secure. Okay, I'm always advocating, propagating that Security features are more and more important just as we need our burglary proof and the Turkish door and the China doors. You need CCTV cameras to record anybody that tries to break into your house. Okay, yes, you need automatic door opening. Okay, you need garage door opening, a GPS car tracker. Okay, yes, you can track your car wherever your car goes, should your car be stolen, you can track it wherever it goes. Contact Nana Kwame Ampedu on the numbers underneath the flyer, okay, so that he will assist you. You know, all my artisans are people with good reputation, respectability, their presentation. They are elderly people. They are not small, small boys. You understand? These are very, very important so that they don't turn around and come and steal from you, okay? I would want you to engage each of my artisans and then look at their appearances. And then you will know the difference. Before you is a list of artisans. I have a lot of them, but I'm just giving you a few. In another video, I'm going to give you another set of artisans. I have the Masons. I have four Masons as of now. Mr. Stephen Opon, Christopher Adade. Uh, I would want most of you to also give a lot of project to Christopher Adade. Uh, Akwesi Entry is there. Michael Fasta, you already know. Um, a carpenter, Mr. Samuel. He has been my existing carpenter uh, since the beginning of my project. But he had some project that he needed to go and work on. He has just come back. So I'm putting him on the channel. He's the one that actually fixed my doors. Mr. Samuel, very good in roofing and any other carpentry works. Mr. Frank Hammond is my boss. He's an electrical contractor. He's good in American 110 220 systems. And besides the King Cancer, who is my in law, is also an electrical technician but he does not do the american 110 220 system okay so make sure you call the right person for the right job don't mix them okay yes don't mix them it is very, very important so we are back at mr james's project okay so far the compactor is compacting the entire rooms to make it ready for us to be able to cast the oversight concrete. Are you with me? Yes. Apparently here we were supposed to lay down the DPM. For some reason, um, the person who had access to the DPM was not available. So they had to proceed. Are you with me? Yes. So there was not too much of a big deal because prior to the casting of the foundation concrete, um, we had the rubber place in there, so um, the moist will not be able to travel from there. And then also we applied the bitumen on the exterior. So we've done all the protection that needed to be done. Are you with me? Yes. So a compactor usually ranges depending on the area. Some are going for 300, 400 per day. Okay, depending on the capacity that you want. Are you with me? So we need to do the compacting and make sure that the laterite is compacted properly. If not, you are going to experience what we call knocking. 
okay when you don't allow your lateral to settle properly we call something knocking you know when you cast your oversized concrete and then with time the lateral will sink underneath the concrete and therefore when you start working on your floor you will hear some knocking sounds you understand it's not the best that is why you need to take your time and allow the lateral to settle properly you don't have to force it because you have to buy lots of water you know to pour on the lateral to be able to sink it properly and as you can see it is it has compacted neatly and when you compact it it looks so beautiful this corridor we're going to have a staircase from here going upstairs we have four bedrooms at the top with a small family area each bedroom has its own bathroom and a closet room sizes should be big it should be about 14 by 15 feet okay including that of your wardrobe if you want to have a walk-in closet that is a different thing but each room should have its own wardrobe okay and this 21st century we don't carry a wardrobe into your into your room it doesn't happen all right so the day of the casting has arrived um, like I always say, the mason or the foreman on the project is Mr. Stephen Opon, whom after completing the Winneba project and the Alumina project, I asked him to take this project as well. So this is the concrete mixture. There are two types of concrete mixture. This is for ground floor, and then there's another one that is a lift type. Yeah, that is for that that we use that one for first floor, second floor, and that, all of that. The concrete mixture usually come with four operators. Four operators. The concrete mixture comes with four operators. The ground floor concrete mixture price is different from that of the, the lift one. So four operators comes with the machine, plus you will need 10 people in addition. Are you with me? So the four operators, their price usually range between 120 and 150 so you will rent the machine for about 500 Ghana cities per day and then the four people will have the that will be 600 because each person is 150 one operating the machine one putting the cement one fetching the sand you know yes so you have four people right there and then the other 10 people will be the team who are going to be pulling the wheelbarrows you understand we have two people fetching the stone Two people fetching the sand are you with me and we have four people pulling the wheelbarrows and we have two masons two master masons they will be at the inside so in total you have 14 people in areas where the casting is huge we can increase the number of team to be instead of 10 we can make them 12 12 plus the four people that comes with the concrete mixture are you with me Yes, so in that case, you have a total number of 16 people. And but standardly, it is 14. Four with the concrete mixture, they usually come with the concrete mixture, and 10 as a team who are going to be doing the concrete work. So eventually, this is how it is being done. This is called the oversight concrete casting. Oversight concrete. Are you with me? I'm proud to casting the oversight concrete, you have to pour a little bit of water. On the ground so that the lateral does not soak the water out of the concrete most often than not some people believe that adding more cement makes it stronger but that is wrong you rather cause harm than doing good to the floor are you with me yes you don't have to add more cement everything goes with a ratio it's just like you cooking a food you know, you're preparing some food, you don't have to add more salt to give it taste. It, it will go bad. You can add more sugar to make it tastier. You can eat it. Are you with me? So you have to give it the proper ratio. Give it the proper ratio. Adding more cement is not the issue. Giving it the right ratio is what makes it stronger. And then also some people believe that adding more water Oh, is the best. Fensu gum, fensu gum, Debbie, it is wrong. You don't add more water. You need appropriate water to mix the concrete. That is all you need. You understand? So this is the tank that brings water. 
So when I'm preparing an estimate for you, I will add all of this. You need such tanks to be at your site. If not, you would have to rent them. These tanks were rented. Mr. James had to rent this tank to, to save some water for him as well. You understand? So all these things come together when you want to cast your concrete. It is important. So you see the arrangement, the cement. A day, the concrete mixture will do 80 bags per day. Once that 80 bags is completed, you can push them to do 120. It means that you have to add some amount to the already charged. So if each person is taking 150, likewise the laborers will also be taking 120, depending on how you bargain. So the four operators you can bargain with them together with that of the laborers who will be pulling the stones and then the, the concrete mixture all the way to the room. 120 for all the laborers, 150 for the mason. A master mason will charge you 200 or even 300. You understand? So that's how it goes. Yes, a master mason will charge you 250 or 300 uh, for two people. Two master masons will be 600 because this is a concrete casting. And then for, for the laborers, they will charge 150 because it's a concrete casting. If it is a block work, they will charge 120. Are you with me? And then the mason will charge 150. So it was done but not completed. So the next day, we have to complete the remaining portion because we ran out of stones. Okay. Yes, we thought one trip would have done the work, but it wasn't enough. So the next day, Mr. Steven and his team had to do the remaining one manually. You understand? But apparently everything had been done neatly. Okay, completely neatly. And I love the way they do the work. Okay, so once you have a good ratio, you don't have your oversized concrete cracking. I'm saying this because of one of my lovely, she's so dear to me, she's like my mother. Yes, um, I don't want to mention her name, but she's so special to me. She had her floor the concrete done and she had some cracks in them and she wanted me to review it. You understand? So I told her the cement was too much. They added more cement. Yes, some people are very keen on that. Yes, so you could see that the next day, we poured water on the concrete. Yes, it is always important to pour water on the concrete right after casting the next day. Are you with me? So that the concrete will not be starving for water. Once it is starving for water, it will start cracking. Are you with me? Yes, so don't put in too much of cement. Just give it the right ratio, okay? The water also should be the appropriate ratio of the water and then right after casting, you have to pour some water on the surfaces. These are very, very important to do so. With this one, I could use 32.5 hour cement because this is just an oversight. Okay, you don't have to waste your money. Okay, but some people, they feel like, hey, let me make it super stronger, but it's still the same. It's still the same. You can use 32.5 hour here or 42.5 hour depending on your pocket you will decide if i am working on your project i will make sure that we minimize costs in certain areas you don't have to waste money you understand because this oversight concrete again you're going to do screening you're going to do tiling so how strong again do you want to put it uh, sometimes you uh, you exaggerate too much you understand yes yeah, the exaggeration is too much just relax um, listen to your foreman, listen to the mason, and let's teach you the best way to minimize cost because things are quite expensive these days. Yes, we are going to use the right size of iron rods. We are not going to cut corners. Okay, yes, use the right size of the blocks, six inches solid for the ground floor. If you go up floor, you can use the hollow blocks. You can still use solid blocks, but you can use hollow blocks to reduce the price and then the pressure on the ground floor as well so this is the dining area heading straight is to the hall okay in the middle is a corridor where the staircase is going to be okay and then to your extreme left hand side you will head to the guest room
Are you with me? Yes. So your left hand side is going to the guest room. Ahead of us is the hall. Okay. On the right, we are heading back. So this is the room. Initially, it was a big master bedroom, but we are going to divide it and then make it a guest room and a boy's cutter. So that is the bathroom for the guests. We're going to make it a little bit smaller to make this room a little bit bigger. And then from the middle here where the pillar is, we're going to divide it into two, which I showed you in the earlier episode. And that portion will be the boy's quarters. We're going to break that window down and then make room for that. So we are pouring water on the entire oversight casting to ensure that everything is fine. Are you with me? So lovely people, this is how it is done. Don't allow anybody to throw dust into your eyes. Don't allow any mason to tell you, oh, this is okay. Some masons are not exposed. Okay, so they will tell you things that they've done in 1972. Whereas we are in the 21st century, you understand? You will tell them, they will tell you, no, this is how we do it. This is how, but that is wrong. There are so many ways to killing the cats, but there is the right way of doing things and new technologies, we should be abreast with new ways of doing things so that we don't experience crack. We don't have to break and redo things all over again. You understand? So now oversight casting is done. All the pillars done. Now we are going to go to areas where we did the extension and then continue with those blog works and then make sure we come to the appreciable height that we want. And then we are ready to receive the form work, which will be coming off later. You understand? All piping work are done. We are using pressure pipe. It should be interplast. Okay, interplast. If not, contact my plumber, Mr. Frederick Owusu. He's a professional plumber. He will assist you in that area. Are you with me? Yes. Carpenters, I have shared with you. Contact Mr. Samuel or Joshua Adam. Are you with me? Yes. Masons, I have Christopher Adade, which I have propagated now. Okay, it's a fantastic mason. I have given me a lot of projects, and you'll be seeing some of his projects very soon. Mr. Steven, you already know, and I could see entry, you know Mr. Frank Hammond, who is my boss. He trained me before I traveled abroad. Mr. Frank Hammond is an electrical contractor. He deals with various solar system, panel installation, um, air conditioning, duct air condi ducting, air conditioning, cassette recessed. Okay, he does all of that, and then um, electrical 110, 220, which is the American ones, American system. You understand? My in-law, Mr. Isaac Kansa, is also an electrical contractor, but he does not do those uh, American 110, 220 system. Neither does he do um, those ducting air conditions. All right, so lovely people, this will bring us to the end of episode 9. I'll be coming your way with episode 10 with the final works of the blocks as we did the extension and the boys' quarters. So this apparently has moved from 5 bedroom to a 6 bedroom. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, what, what are you waiting for? Please do so and make us number one. From me to you, it's Shalom. God bless you wherever you are. Bye-bye.